All right, the stream should be up on both Twitch and on YouTube. Better or lower latency on Twitch, better graphics on YouTube. So I'm here just suddenly. I just, I literally just came inside from seeing Godzilla Kong, Kong, Godzilla, Kong X, Godzilla, whatever you want to call it. And I got in and I opened Discord and I started working on uh, a guide on my other screen and Modwife was in here and I said, I have Discord open because as soon as RimWorld has a notification, I, that means the final preview is today and I got to do a stream. And then I said that and Modwife was like, is that it? And I look over and sure enough, the notification was there. So we are here for RimWorld Anomaly DLC preview number four, the final preview, I would say, because the DLC comes out in two days. So um, we're going to speculate about stuff. We're going to have fun with it. Um, yeah, we're going to read through this together, look at the images and speculate, even though we'll know the truth in two days, right? So it's just a fun thing to do. It's, uh, again, it's like Christmas Eve where you're feel feeling of the of the packaging for the gifts and trying to figure out what it is, even though you'll know the next morning. So uh, thank you guys for being in on both sides. I'm probably not going to read very much chat because a lot of people get really excited about this and they will start posting things before I even get to it. Uh, but we will discuss it as we go through. Uh, and if I miss any of the alerts or anything like that, uh, I, I'm sure you know that I appreciate you. So, all right, let's get started with RimWorld Anomaly preview number four. Cubes, spheres, obelisks, soundtrack, and languages. It's a lot of shapes. Hi, folks. Only two more days until RimWorld Anomaly and free content update 1.5 are out. They both release on Thursday, April 11th at 10 a.m., Pacific time. There's also a timer. Oh no, this is the time I've been telling people for like the last two weeks. I said, I base this on nothing other than previous releases. It should be out around 1 p.m. Eastern time. <sighs> people are going to keep thinking more and more that I'm a developer, but I am not. I'm not. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I just keep getting lucky. I got to stop guessing things because I keep getting lucky on. You know what? I was wrong on archaeology. That should be enough to, to let you know. I had no idea. The RimWorld Anomaly original soundtrack will be available on April 11th as well. This OST comes with 11 new tracks. Oh, nice. Move over, royalty. And nearly an hour of awesome new tunes made by RimWorld composer Alistair Lindsay. Guys, this means I will do my first playthrough without using P music. <gasps> Sacrilege. I want to hear all the new stuff and I want to hear it often. So first playthrough, we're not going to use P music. <gasps> What? No way. All right. Also, Anomaly is launching with full support for 10 languages. On release day, you can play Anomaly in English, German, French, Japanese, Korean, Polish, Russian, Spanish, simplified Chinese, or traditional Chinese. Huge thanks to our community translators. It's really cool when you go through the credits of the game, the section of, of uh, volunteer translators and stuff like that is enormous. So pretty awesome. Um, thank you. To, thank you for spreading RimWorld throughout all the languages. All right, spoiler warning. Of course, of course, this has spoilers, but we don't care. We want spoilers. Bring them on. Today's preview blog talks about the less obvious and more insidious threats you'll face in Anomaly. Terror comes in all shapes and sizes. All right. The cube. Obviously, the golden cube is no threat. It's no more than a beautiful gift sent by a good friend. This hand-sized cube shines like gold but it's impossible to scratch. As everyone knows, cubes make perfect companions. Look at this. This is, uh, that's a lot of gold. So someone was like, is that painted or is that all gold? That's all gold. You can tell a difference. Uh, solid gold. Do we notice anything else here? No, everyone just stare at the cube. Yeah, nothing else here. I like that they also planted a bunch of uh, yellow flowers around. Or maybe, wait, the, uh, maybe they didn't. Maybe yellow flowers just spring up around the cube. That'd be kind of cool, right? Cube. All right. Hey, Tynan, enough. Tynan's like, I know, I know. I, pu I put wall lights in the game. But how about I put two very inefficient uh, floor lamps in the corners instead? No. You added the wall lights. Use them. Use them. We're just lucky there's no conduits everywhere that you can see. All right. It's always invitingly warm to the touch, like a trusted pet or a hug from a good friend. If you look closely, you'll see more than gold in the delightful way light plays across its surface. If you love the cube like we do, why not make a sculpture of the cube? What are the great things in the room? 
Oh, sorry. I was so I was so in tune with the cube. I didn't even notice. Actually, just in my head, I was like, "That's just scrap." Are those imperfect cubes? Does it spawn imperfect cubes? No, the cube wouldn't do that. I have no idea. <laughs> Don't listen to the others who say that we're unhealthy, unhealthily captivated by the cube. Ignore those who claim that our curiosity progresses or progress to fascination and into obsession. That we're psychically compelled to interact with it, and we feel sick if we can't. They're just jealous of our perfect, wonderful cube. Interesting. It looks like they might be making them. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. They're trying to make like copies of it or something. That's what it looks like. Unless Parrish is just looking at these ones as well. So either the cube is like spawning other imperfect cubes or these guys are trying to emulate it or something. Yeah. Interesting. So people are going to be obsessed with the cube. Colonists. Well, people are already obsessed with the cube. But now it looks like colonists are going to be as well. But yeah, I don't notice anything else, though, honestly. Um, just a cube. These are uh, either animal beds or egg boxes, right? We got stools. We got columns. We got a shelf. Um, we got, you know, there's an that's a art bench, right? So yeah, they're probably making these. Interesting. Mental break. Cube admiration, yeah. <laughs> Gold auto doors, well... What are the things below the columns? Those are, uh, I think those are either an wooden animal, wooden animal beds, gold animal beds, or um, because there are animal boxes in the game, and there's also egg boxes, and both look kind of similar. That's all it's given us about the cube. Interesting. Okay, the sphere, the Nokio sphere, Nokio sphere is very much not as lovable as the cube. Even being near it hurts. It's made of dark metal, covered with curved and jagged grooves, and emanates sensations of pain. Hey, pain is virtue getting buffed again, not that they needed it. More worryingly, when it appears, the sphere appears to be increasingly increasing in activity. It's not clear what will happen when this peaks, but if you capture it, you can decrease its activity by suppressing it. Then you can study it. Ooh. Uh, Nixie, thank you for signing up to be a channel member. Thank you, Nixie. So that's the thing I was wondering if it was a new mech. I don't know that this... I don't know if this really tells us it's a new mech or not a new mech, but it looks like it's not with a raid, right? It's by itself. Of course, that doesn't necessarily mean anything. These previews are always like lower difficulty and whatnot. So, uh oh. Hang on. Uh, my Twitch chat just disconnected. It shows that the stream is still live. So I think I'm going to be good. But yeah, I have lost Twitch chat. Let me just make sure. I'm going to click on OBS to make sure it's still connected. Yeah, OBS is still showing complete connectivity to both YouTube and to Twitch. Yep. Yeah. All right. I just don't have chat for some reason. Still live? Okay. Well, hopefully you guys can still see it. If you can hear me, great. But, uh, okay, and the chat's still working for everyone else. Yeah, I don't know. It's disconnected on mine. Oh, well, it's fine. If you guys can still hear me, that's all that matters. All right, so let's take a look at this and see if we can discern anything new. We got the crawling. Um, it looks like the cube. Oh, no. Is that kind of maybe like the graphic of the Diabolus? You know how the Diabolus has that like beam and then it. It looks like there's some kind of an electrical shock or something that could be an, it could have been a low shield that they popped or it could be hitting them with like electrical stuff. Acosta is a pawn that I see a lot in the game. We got one of those other entities that we've seen quite a bit over there. Don't see any other weird items or anything. Yeah, I think this is actually a screenshot they had on the Steam page already or something. It looks really familiar. What's the plant in the corner near the fire? This? Oh, that's the start of a tree, like a pine tree. Yeah. Yeah, not seeing anything weird. So this doesn't necessarily mean this isn't a mech still but it isn't with other mechs so it's it's probably just its own entity right so an architect mech or whatever you want to call it um if you study the Nokia sphere you can learn that it has a single purpose to inflict pain if you can keep it suppressed you will learn how to intentionally activate it turning into a weapon to use against your foes oh man um this would be incredible for a kill box if it works that way right imagine you have this contained like touching your kill box <laughs> entrance. And so when raiders come in, they're just in severe pain. 
Unless they're masochist, in which case they'd be super happy. When activated, the Akio Seer will teleport to a remote location of your choice and unleash a barrage of pain on anyone nearby. Oh, you can really control it too. Okay, my Switch chat is back finally. I don't know what happened there. The Akio Seer will continue to hunt down living creatures until it's destroyed. Or it chooses to depart. This leaves you free to love the cube. Your twi your chat broke also. Okay, the stream kept working. Wow. So you can send it after things. It also says we'll hunt down living creatures. So this might be something like you lock yourself indoors and say, all right, let's just shove the sphere out there. <laughs> Innocuo sphere plus Autobahn kill box. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking, right? So, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's definitely doing like an attack, right? It's not, it's causing pain, all right. But this, is that actually dealing damage? I, I mean, there are, yeah, there's dead people and injured people. It's not just like a pain of the mind alone. It doesn't look like anyway. But I really wonder, that definitely looks like a low shield popping, like finishing off. But yeah, I don't know. It's really hard to tell. It's got, it's not fire though, at least, right? Those are like, Rainbow color, really. Yeah, no idea. Other than that, I don't see anything new in the screenshot. Hmm. I wonder if this is like a one-time use thing or not. Yeah, I don't know. Hunt down living creatures. Do you think it'll attack animals as well? Do you think it'll attack other entities? Just in comments, the pawn near the artist bench. Oh, we've seen these, yeah. We've seen these, um tied up in other previews so this is some kind of entity because unless you can tie up pawns which it hasn't said yet but yeah we've seen those I wonder if it damages or destroys the walls yeah i don't know this has lots of use cases depending on how you actually use use it is it calling for help what the sphere or this guy with it yeah i don't know this thing whatever it is whatever it is yeah uh there is some kind of smoke or something up here too or some kind of black residue. I don't know. It, it looks a different color than the smoke in the game. But is that from the sphere? I don't know. Uh, the obelisks. We've gone from squares to circles and now to triangles. There are three varieties of obelisk. Okay. Each with a different horrific effect. They all arrive from space. And they all radiate the same putrid psychic energy. Which gradually intensifies as it approaches some dangerous limit. You can send colonists to suppress an obelisk. To prevent it from activating. You can also mark it for study to try to learn its purpose and perhaps make use of it. Or you can attempt to destroy it. But doing so may unleash dangerous phenomena. That looks so weird <laughs> compared to like everything else in RimWorld. <laughs> this is off map threat. This is on map threat it looks like. You know it's a preview. I'm also really zoomed in. I'm using a 4K monitor and I've zoomed in a lot. So this is kind of pixely for multiple reasons. Just... I'm at like 250% zoom. These pictures that they posted are like, you know, like uh, postcards. So, um, there's again some new masks or something. Maybe tribal. I don't see anything else new in this. This one's showing some electricity. I don't know. It does look pretty similar to the yeah to the dead space stuff. Yeah. Do you think it's gonna turn people into creatures? Once you've completed your research, colonists will discover that it is a fragment of a much larger architect structure that can act on organic matter at a distance. Uh, it, it sounds very similar. You may discover its function sooner than that, though. Sometimes the obelisk self-activates, and sometimes merely suppressing or stunning it is enough to unleash its power. That's pretty cool. Dead, Yeah, dead space in RimWorld. Wait, what does it mean by... Are we going to get another Z level? So we have kind of, uh, in one of the other previews, it talked about the flesh cave, which was like a Z level, like not really, but it, it kind of is supposed to be like that. It, it takes you to what appears to be a, a combat map that looks like you're in a cave. So it's kind of a Z level. Are we going to get another structure like under these? I mean, it would be weird to put that system in the game, system in the game. It's not really a system. At, I mean, as far as we know, and then only use it for one thing, right? So I wouldn't doubt if there's some kind of, like it said, structure under this or something. Love the cube. The warped obelisk can turn living organisms, including animals and people and, tr and trees, into flesh monsters. Yeah. <laughs> this is definitely like the markers from uh, from Dead Space, which is pretty awesome. 
Trees? Hey, you know what? I've been I've been preparing for this for years. I've been paving over nature and people are like, Adam, what are you doing? Are you trying to make a parking lot? Do you do you want RimWorld to be Walmart parking lot simulator? Guys, I was preparing. I was preparing. No one would listen to me. No one. They would thought I was crazy. Visions of cubes paving over the the landscape with concrete. I mean, should have listened. A colonist can be mutated in several different ways from growing a bone bladed tentacle to twisting their internal organs into something thoroughly alien. Ooh. Bone bladed tentacle. Melee gods are going to be amazing, I think. <laughs> We're going to have like mutated melee gods. Less monstrous, but just as terrifying is the twisted obelisk. This doesn't change an organism. Instead, its crackling energy seems to pull all nearby living things. Pull on all nearby living things. Eventually snapping them away to somewhere else. If a colonist is taken, you'll have to hope they can find their way out of an of endless rooms and hallways. Wait, what? Is this a live cube stream? Yeah. The f we don't get a picture of this one. The final monolith wannabe is the corrupted obelisk. Monolith wannabe. This you uses its inhuman inhumanly complex power to duplicate intelligent creatures that are theoretically without limit. Your colonist twins are not always hostile, but the duplication process is imperfect, and any twins will need the finest medical care to survive. We can duplicate our god pawns? Like, yeah, I guess if you duplicate a god pawn 20 times, they might kill you, but... <laughs> I mean, I'm just thinking of some of the pawns I've gotten that are, like, so friggin' good, right? Like, you get a uh, Tough Nimble Brawler, which is, like, super rare. I actually like Tough Nimble Jogger a little bit better, but Tough Nimble Brawler, I know, is, like, the one that all people always think. And then you duplicate them, and if you can capture some of those, you just have more? Well, it, it sounds like they're going to need... Uh, you know what? It's probably, like, Resurrection. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I keep thinking about new applications every time I'm looking... Let's not get ahead of ourselves. They might have something like Resurrection Psychosis or something, right? Like Clone Psychosis. Resurrection Psychosis is in the base game. For anyone that doesn't know, uh, when you use Resurrection Mech Serum on someone to bring them back to life, they can come back with Resurrection Psychosis, which eventually kills them, unless you have, like, Healer Mech Serum, or... Yeah, that's the main one, right? And Healer Mech Serum is very rare, so... Uh, hopefully it's not... Not as bad as that, but... That's... Oh, okay, never mind. I thought it was the end of the preview. I was like, is that the end of the preview? Hang on, I want to go back to this, though. A colonist. Hang on. A colonist is taken. You'll have to hope they can find their way out of an in of endless rooms and hallways. Ooh, crap. That could suck. Clones just don't have guns. Yeah, they're all naked at least, right? So we were talking about like your god pawn getting getting cloned and you getting more of them. But wow. What are the plants? Uh so almost all the plants in 1.5 have graphic different graphics as they're growing now instead of just smaller graphics so i think this is the heel root growing graphic it also said that this can happen at random not even just from studying it and things so I, at first i was like you'll have to be careful who you have study it but it sounds like it's just going to take someone hopefully there's no enemies in there like imagine you have a this is going to be another reason not to take, like, Incapable of Violence. Maybe. Maybe. A dungeon type event? Yeah, imagine your Incapable of Violence gets sucked in there. Like, what do you do? They just die? I don't know. We're getting ahead of ourselves. There's no way to know. It doesn't say anything about enemies. It just says endless rooms and hallways. So maybe the... Maybe the fear is, like, finding your way out before you starve instead of actual enemy threats, you know? Yeah, I don't know. I wish they showed a picture of this. I really do. This is the only one they're not showing a picture of. I guess there's good reason for that. All right, well, let's let's keep going here. The end game. The monolith is the source of everything. The monolith is the conduit. Its power must be defeated. It threatens to twist and destroy everything we know. Tested on Sacrifice Child. This looks like another game. <laughs> if you had showed me this, like, a couple months ago, I would have been like, oh, this game looks really similar to RimWorld. I wouldn't have been like... What have they done to RimWorld? It would have been like, well, this game looks kind of similar to RimWorld, <laughs> which is kind of kind of funny. Um, so there's the new flamethrower. Look at that. Lazarus, huh? Yeah. 
He's got a he's got a new pack on. Yeah, this is like crazy mo modded overhaul. Yeah. Uh, we've seen this guy, this thing. That's a revenant, right? There's a revenant. I guess those are shamblers. There's the crossbow. Wait, what is that? Have we seen this? That looks like a sword. Like, that kind of looks like a melee weapon. A little bit. New sword? Yeah, maybe. Oh, that would be so nice if there was a sword to compete with, with like, royalty's sword, right? It's a fishing rod. <laughs> Biggest twist of all time. We don't get it in the preview or anything, and then we load up Anomaly on uh, Thursday, and you can do flesh fishing. <laughs> Like, get your flesh pole. Uh, you know what? Maybe we shouldn't call it a flesh pole. Get your flesh pole and, you know, cast your line down into the flesh pit and see what comes out. Probably not. It's probably not a fishing rod. <laughs> um, is DLC focused on post-credits gameplay? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know, actually. We haven't really heard about that. I'm hoping that we can continue playing like you can with a ship launch and it's not like uh, the Arcanexus. Man, I really hope that's a melee weapon. It would make a lot of sense, too, because uh, they've only showed us and talked about three new weapons, and they're all ranged weapons, so. Drop unannounced content. We didn't announce Fishy in archaeology. Probably never going to convince us he's not a dev. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if they did that, that would be crazy. So. Um, what is this? That looks like a... Um, is that like a... Sh is that like a shock lance? That's a that's a kind of lance, isn't it? But it's not the greenish color, right? No, that's like a new lance as well, huh? So we got maybe a new melee weapon and maybe a new lance. We got some kind of backpack thing. We still don't know what it is. So a new kind of insanity lance, maybe. Yeah, maybe its own kind. We know there's a flamethrower weapon. I don't think the pack is the flamethrower, but. Oh, hang on. Hang on, we got some organs down here. And they're in a different container. There's some organs down here in black boxes. There's going to be some kind of new po body parts we can install. <laughs> Could be a new pulser, yeah, maybe. Oh, wait. There is a new pulser there, too. I was hovering right over it. That is some kind of pulser. Like, flesh pulser or something. Parts for your own monsters, maybe? Yeah, maybe those are monster parts. Like, that would be awesome if we could, like, pull off, like, these quills or something and put them onto someone. It could summon the blood rain. Uh, the blood rain, it said, was a, was a ritual, right? So, I don't think so. Is it releasing so soon? Yeah, two days from now. Two days from now. Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. There's, um... Like the new potions or whatever they're, they're called. We know what this stuff is for the most part. I'm not seeing anything else, but there looks like there's a new pulser. What pulser could they be, though? Like, let's think about what's in the game already. Oh, yeah, I didn't notice that either. Look at that. This is making apparel with something. That's a, that's a textile, actually. Corruption pulse or something, right? So, like, but what, what could it do? What's on fire on the shelf? That looks like an old... That looks like one of the old lances. Yeah, they, they're, some of these uh, pictures have been on, like, the Steam page. And oddly enough, they also have updated the pictures on there. And they've updated blog posts after they're posted sometimes. So I do kind of remember this, but I don't think we deep dove into this. Hmm. Why is the rat inside? Maybe it's their pet, all right? Maybe he he's self-tamed and they love him. 24 hour on Thursday? No, I won't be doing a 24 hour stream, but I'll be doing a long stream. So. Right above the flesh pole? Uh, we don't know. It's some kind of structure. We've seen that in almost all of them. But I'm really curious about this. Like, what do we have? We have Sooth Pulsar, right? Which which uh, makes people happy. We have Animal Pulsar, which makes animals unhappy. No idea. Oh, what if it's like a Berserk Pulse, like a miniature um, Neuroquake? Oh, man, Neuroquake from... Yeah, like, I was thinking Enrage them, like, actually Berserk them. But that would make a lot of sense, right? 
That'd be kind of crazy. Pain pulse or something? Yeah, that makes people go berserk. Wow. Resurrection of the Dead pulser? I don't think so, because we got in the last preview, they told us about the dead life dust. So I feel like it wouldn't overlap. But zombie pulser? Yeah, I don't know, because we they already told us that there's dead life dust, and there's like three different ways to use it, and it brings back the dead. So I'm really curious about these dark organs, though. What the crap? Is that Batman in the left corner? This? No, that's a Revenant. We saw that in another preview. Yeah. What's in the top left? We got Will. Um, there's some kind of creatures up there. Some kind of new building that we're not sure. There's a there's a dying squirrel. I don't think those are statues because one of them's laying down. So I think those are creatures. There's no... Qua oh no, I didn't notice that. That's probably not a sword. Oh no, my hopes and dreams. That's a good. That's a good catch, though. So, for anyone that missed it, you see this weapon is laying down, and it says normal, and you can see the numbers of things. Whatever this is, it's not stackable, and it's not a weapon, or else it would say a quality. Oh, uh, that feels bad. I was hoping that was a new awesome sword. I thought the melee gods were gonna get their flesh pull. Yeah. So, what the crap is it then? It's probably a consumable of some sort then, right? Like, uh, it's probably just another lance or something. It could be partially crafted? Maybe, maybe. Yeah, maybe. It's hard to know. There's also something here. I'm not sure what that is. I'll, I don't know what this is e either, actually. What the crap is this? Have we seen... There's some kind of building in here with, an like, a orb on it. Maybe this uses dust to pull. Yeah, maybe, maybe. And I was, I had my heart set on a new melee weapon, but I think you're probably right. It's probably some kind of other lance. Yeah, you're probably right. It's either, I mean, it's either a consumable or something that you craft with, right? Otherwise, it would have a number or a quality. That sucks. Well, I mean, maybe it doesn't suck. Who knows? But what are the resources on the shelf? I think that's the bioferrite stuff it keeps talking about. All right, the only way out is through. You must grow the monolith's power, widening the conduit that leads into the void until you can finally crack it open and face the world-twisting hell it unleashes. Only then will you be able to step through into a place of nightmares. Touch the machine god and choose your fate. Anomaly releases on Thursday, April the 11th at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. That's 10 a.m. Pacific. Uh, you can already wishlist it. Wishlisting games do, does help out quite a bit. You can chat about the post uh, on Reddit. Uh, oh, man, I thought we were going to get like a music preview, honestly, <laughs> because of what it was saying earlier there. So less than two days, maybe Arkite crafting stuff. Yeah, I don't know. Could it be like a corrupted Thrumbo Horn? Thrumbo Horn are stackable. Well, I guess it's only one, right? I don't know. Maybe it could still be a monster part, right? What does touching the machine god mean? That's a good question, too. So, aside from, like, speculating all this random stuff about here, like, what what are my thoughts? So, from the previews, it does seem like no, one, no pawn is safe. For better or worse, no pawn is safe. It could be, like, a club. Clubs don't have quality, that's true. So, maybe it is a sword without quality. Um, but it seems like no pawn is safe. Whether that's for the best or if it's annoying, we don't know yet. But it sounds like, based on... Um, the invisible hunter, what's it called? The revenant, um, stalking someone and putting them into a coma. People getting s sucked into a, what did it call it? Endless room and hallways, like, and this can happen even if they're not the ones researching it. Like, there seems to be, in almost all the previews, something that's pointing towards the fact of no one, no one is safe. It said something about monoliths, uh, so, something about new endings, yeah. I think in the very first preview, it said something about making a choice. So hopefully there's like multiple endings, but but it seems like no pawn is safe, which can be, it can be an interesting thing, especially for like me, you know, I've played so much new plant. No, uh, plants in 1.5 have new growing graphics. This is heel root. Um, so for someone like me, that's played like 6,000 hours of the game and I've played each of the threats thousands of times and I kind of just know how to do every threat. Obviously the threats can be harder. They can still catch me off guard and kill me depending on how set up I am. But I know how to handle all the threats and I know like when every everyone is safe, like they are safe. But with this, 
it feels like uh the good part of it like i said is you don't get that maybe that sense of safety like you know your pawns are never completely safe which can have that like horror anxiety thing which can be interesting and fun if it's done well and if if it's not overbearing now on the other side of that it does it would suck to have like pawns that you're really attached to have these things happen and you don't have any recourse so hopefully there's some kind of recourse to it i'm, I'm guessing there must be something but also most people play with pawn counts that are pretty low i would say most people play with like 8 to 12 pawns because that's kind of what storytellers try to keep you at if you don't know how to game it a little bit or if you don't have the dlcs like 8 to 12 is pretty typical for someone that is uh newer to the game or even not necessarily newer just just on average i would say like that that's where storytellers are trying to keep you like 8 to 12 ish and yeah give or take a little but um so now will this also screw over solo pawn runs like i like doing solo pawn runs and that's what something that comes to mind too because we did like solo mechanator we've done some others and i plan on doing more solo runs like what are you gonna do if you're doing a solo run and someone gets you know ported off to friggin maze and they don't make it out i guess you just start over that might be why they added the game over thing right that might be why they added game over where it's like oh well your pawn's gone you can start over with a new one so actually that's probably now that i think about it, that's probably the case so i'm kind of glad to have new threats i'm kind of glad that not that there presumably will never be a time that you feel completely safe maybe that changes um, and the other thing I'm really wondering is like, do you encounter all these on every run? I can't tell from the preview. I hope not. I hope like in order to make it so that you, again, this is from someone that's playing like thousands of hours of this DLC, presumably. I hope that each run is like a unique one that you play themed through. Like I want to do a run that's like you get one of the three obelisks and you get the cube, right? And then I want to do another run that's a different obelisk in all of the um, the thing, the infestation thing. But is it going to be that way? Or is this just like all this crap's going to happen? I don't know. That's, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Obviously, I don't know. But I'm going to do a solo run. The Adam, 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 and Adam. Yeah. <laughs> so the Adam family run. The Adam's family. Do I still think I'll try for the thing run? That's what I'm saying is I don't know... I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. It'll, um, it depends on if that's which way it goes, right? Like, do, do all these happen? Are they random? Are these things, are these all going to be different scenarios? Like maybe each one is just a scenario. Uh, let's see. Biotech added two new scenarios. Maybe this adds like five new scenarios. I don't know. I don't know how else they would do it unless, um, or it keeps talking about like contacting a dark God, a machine God. Maybe it gives you options, you know? I don't know. Maybe there's like a trade-off. It's like, hey, I got this cool cube. I want to check it out. But if, if you do, monsters are going to start showing up. I, I don't know. There's lots of directions they could go with it. Uh, I'm looking forward to figuring it out and playing through it. I'm really, really curious about all these new items and new weapons, especially. Um, that's another thing, too. Like, if you think about royalty, sometimes you play with royalty and ignore all of royalty, Aside from like an item, like you might you might have royalty on because you want that item, like low shields, or you might play royalty because you want Zeus hammers and mono swords. So, and then you r relatively can ignore the rest. Is this going to be the same way, like, or does it force it on you with anomaly? You know, it's like, all right, I have my anomaly DLC, but on this run, I'm just going to not worry about all this crazy stuff, and I'm just going to craft new things, and it's going to be kind of cool. And then it's like, nope. Here's your parasites and here's all your obelisks. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Be interesting to see. Not machine guys do ending. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Yeah, but it's sound. It sounds like we might be communing with it through the through the uh, not obelisk. What do you call it? The monolith or something. I don't know. I'm not sure. Seems to go against the whole story generator thing and more like force narrative. Hope it's not all the time. Hope it's not all the time. Yeah, well, the thing is, like, it can develop some stories like that, but th yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Like, these events that it's talking about can generate stories, absolutely, right? Like, imagine you have a pawn that just had a baby, and then she is going to go get some baby food for it or something, uh, or going to nurse it, and then she gets teleported into this back room's bullcrap, right? Like, that's pretty crazy. It's like, all right, now... She has to fight her way through this to try to make it home for her baby. And if she dies, her baby is an orphan now. Like, those are stories. 
But if if this backroom uh, monolith happens every playthrough, it's like, okay. It's the same story, just told slightly different each time. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. We'll have to see. Yeah, and like, how does the how do the storytellers react to this stuff? Yeah, I don't know. The, the baby is teleported. Oh, that's a good point. What if kids can be teleported through them? Good lord. That'd be brutal. Yeah, so it abs absolutely can tell more stories. The pr the I don't know that's going to be a problem, but the potential problem is the variety of those stories after you've experienced them one time. Like, is this going to be something like... Oh, all right, I've done the it, I've done the the thing playthrough with the parasite. Like it was fine. It was fun to figure it out the first time. Now I know how to figure it out. I'm just not going to turn that one on again unless I'm doing some off theme run. You know, I hope not. I hope not. But yeah, don't know. I guess we'll wait and see. We only got a couple days, right? Less than two days. But I like the story of Mortar Baby and Floor Baby. Yeah, I really do like the more organic stories in RimWorld, for sure. And this has the potential to add some organic story. I just hope the ones that aren't organic, that maybe are forced to happen, feel uh, interesting at the most. Or, or at least, I should say. I hope they are interesting, so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this preview is actually... Wait a minute! They didn't preview ghouls! They said they were going to preview ghouls more! One of the updates mentioned ghouls, and it was like, we'll talk more about ghouls in a later update. They didn't. Hey. Where my, where's my ghoul preview? I was trying to figure out if ghouls were going to be, like, great melee people. Tia? Tia has lied to us. She has been taken by the cube. No, they said this is the last one. They mentioned them, but I thought they were going to go over them in more detail. Yeah. Was it three where they said they they're gonna Tia keep his love? I'm sure they're super busy. Tia's made me not buy the DLC now. <laughs> no. No. All right. Uh, but yeah, that's the whole preview. So uh, I wasn't even planning on getting on your day. I kind of figured the preview was probably gonna come today, though. I doubted it would come tomorrow, so I've, I've kind of been on the lookout for it, and I was ready to get on. I do have a lot of stuff today. I'm getting stuff ready for my daughter's uh, camping trip, her school camping trip, and and a plethora of other things. So I will wrap it up there. If you missed any of this, the VOD is up immediately on YouTube, and it's on 4K in YouTube. So feel free to, if you're on Twitch, head over to YouTube, click on the Live tab, and it'll take you to this. If you're on YouTube, you can just click back to any part that you want. You literally just missed it. It's already available in 4K for you, though, Bruce. Just go to YouTube and click on the Live tab. Uh, a reminder that if you are on the... Uh, on the live stream on YouTube side, or even if you want to head over from Twitch, if you hit the like button on this preview, it will help it even when it's not a live stream anymore. It'll help the little VOD of this, and more people get their eyes on this preview and us us discussing the preview. I'm sorry for all the chats that I did miss. I will go back through and thank everyone on Twitch's end. Um, I think I hit everyone on YouTube's end already that, uh, that, that sign up for membership and stuff. Um, but yeah, if I missed anything, it's just the nature of these previews. I try, I know people get excited and they start telling me stuff before I'm even to it. So I try to tunnel vision on the previews a little bit, but uh, I'll go ahead and end the part on the YouTube and then I'll, uh, I'll thank you guys over on Twitch. So thank you guys again on the YouTube side. Again, if you can hit the like button on your way out, helps this video. Uh, oh, I have news really quick that you all might be interested in. Um... I don't want to sell it in a negative way or say it in a negative way, um, but the the editor and I have had some problems with getting the edit out when I wanted it out. I wanted the edit out two to three weeks ago, and I thought it was almost being wrapped up like four or five weeks ago. I just got the edit last night. I just got the edit last night. It is processing on YouTube right now. I have nine hours of footage to go through and and okay and make sure it's fine. I, I'm really worried that it's not going to be worth it now because it's coming out so close to the, to the DLC. So I would say keep an eye out on the edited version of the single phase run, but it's going to be engulfed by DLC content, which is really unfortunate because the single phase run was so interesting and so crazy. Uh, but if you are interested in the single phase edit or if you just want to help it out and maybe help it to break even or something, um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it, it should be up. YouTube is processing it right now, so... I, I will release it on YouTube as soon as YouTube is done processing it. Uh, but yeah, I, I thought it was going to be out weeks ago, um, but it, it will probably be out tonight or tomorrow morning. So 
Um, sorry for those that have been waiting on it, but I am happy to finally have it out. I just hope it doesn't flop because of being engulfed by the DLC, but all right. 